You're listening to the Dibbly Dobbly Podcast. Remember to like, share, comment, subscribe, and click the bell to make sure you get the latest episodes of the podcast. Be sure to like and share our Facebook page and follow us on Twitter and on Instagram. Hi everyone and welcome back to another episode of the Dibbly Dobbly Podcast. On today's episode of the podcast, we summarise day two of the fourth Ashes Test between Australia and England from the SCG. It's the Dibbly Dobbly Podcast and let's get started. Let's have a look at the session by session breakdown of day two of the fourth Ashes Test from the SCG. In the first session of play, rain stopped play a couple of times and we had a couple of interruptions for rain, but the rain soon disappeared and Smith and Kawaja brought up the 50 partnership for the fourth wicket. Australia at lunch with three for 209. In the second session of play, saw Smith and Kawaja bring up their 100 run partnership for the fourth wicket. Soon after Smith departed for 67, caught Butler board broad. Smith and Kawaja added 115 for the fourth wicket partnership. Kawaja brought up his half century on his test return and Cameron Green got out for five, caught Crawley bold broad. Then Alex Carey was the last wicket to fall for Australia in the second session just before T for 13, caught Bearstro bold root. Then Kawaja brought up his century on his return to the Australian test side just before T to take Australia six for 321 at T. In the final session of play on day two, Pat Cummins was the first wicket to go for Australia after T for 24, caught Butler, bowled broad. Then Kawaja and Stark added 50 runs for the eighth wicket partnership. Soon after, Usman Kawaja departed for a magnificent 137, bowled by Stuart Broad. Kawaja and Stark added 67 runs for the eighth wicket partnership. Stuart Broad brought up his five wicket haul, and Australia declared 8 for 416 in their first innings. England at stumps are none for 13. They trail by 403 runs with Hamid 2 not out and Crawley 2 not out. What are my thoughts on the day? I thought it was a great day for Australia. Another dominant day for Australia. No surprises here. They batted well to get to 8 for 416 declared, which was a pretty good turtle on this SCG wicket. I thought the standout today for Australia was also Kawaja. What a century on return to the test side coming in to replace Travis Head. Magnificent 137 of 260 balls. He really led from the front, and he really got on um, and scored that big century. Obviously, a few of the Australian batsmen had starts and got out, but he was the only one who converted his start into a big score, and that was a magnificent century from Kawaja. Um, obviously, uh, for the selectors, it's going to be a bit of a conundrum whether or not he keeps his spot in the team. Obviously, he's just come in to replace Travis Head for this test match. So maybe Marcus Harris could be in danger for the final test in Hobart uh, after Kawaja's brilliant century. But I thought he batted magnificently. He looked easy at the crease. He looked at ease. He didn't look flustered. He was calm, um, as Kawaja always is. He played magnificent shots. He rotated the strike nicely. He was very watchful. And he played a very good knock for Australia. So magnificent century on return for Usman Kawaja. I thought he was the standout today. I thought Steve Smith batted well for his 67. Off 141 balls. He would would have been disappointed to get out on 67 by Stuart Broad. Uh, nicking one behind to Josh Butler. Uh, would have been disappointed not to get the century. But he had a, a magnificent partnership with Kawaja of 115 for the fourth wicket. Which pretty much set up Australia for the rest of the day. Um, also, Australia had some great lower order partnerships um, as well with the tail enders as well. Were very crucial in terms of Australia getting to that 416 score. Uh, Kawaja and Kerry added 43 for the sixth wicket. Kawaja and Cummins 46 for the seventh wicket. Kawaja and Stark 67 for the eighth wicket. And Lyon and Stark 18 unbeaten for the ninth wicket. Those were handy partnerships for Australia in terms of getting them past 400 in the first innings. So overall, it was a pretty good batting display from Australia today, led by Usman Khawaja, who I thought was outstanding. Um, just before stumps, Australia had a crack at England with the ball. Uh, they did get a wicket. Uh, Mitchell Stark uh, nicked off Crawley uh, for a duck, uh, but apparently he bowled a no ball and Sat Crawley was recalled to the crease. So Mitchell Stark not keeping his foot behind the line there, but overall... 
That little spell just before Stumps was a pretty good spell from Australia. Stark and Cummins were at Hamid and Crawley, making them play, uh, making them uncomfortable at the crease. Um, so they bowled well in that little period just before Stumps. Um, Australia would have been disappointed that Stark bowled the no ball and didn't get the wicket. But overall, uh, with that being said, overall it was a pretty good day for Australia. Let's talk about England's performance today. Another hard day in the field for England. They had their opportunities yet again. Uh, unfortunately, they did not take their opportunities and they weren't able to sustain the pressure that they built up on Australia from day one. Um, obviously, drop catches again. Obviously, Joe Root dropped Kawaja off Leach for 28, which was a big let off because Kawaja went on to get 137. Um, also, Ben Stokes had a bit of an injury, maybe to his side when he was bowling, so that's not good for England. So, nothing went right for England uh, today. Obviously, didn't take their opportunities and couldn't sustain pressure on Australia. Um, they did well to, to get Australia four down for 232. Obviously, when they broke the partnership between Smith and Kawaja, you thought that England, if they got another couple of wickets and had Australia six down for 232, it would have been a better story. Unfortunately... Uh, with England, um, as we've seen in this series thus far, they haven't been able to take back-to-back -back wickets and sustain pressure and keep pressure on the Australian batsmen. And they weren't able to pick up wickets at regular intervals. They weren't able to bowl the tailenders out, the Australian tailenders. Yet again, Australia's tailenders added a lot of partnerships and it added a lot of runs um, in the innings. Obviously, 43 46, 67, and 18 unbeaten for the uh, tailenders' partnerships in Australia's innings. Yet again, England could not break those partnerships, and therefore Australia got up to 8 for 416 declared, which pretty much has put England back in this match big time. And they've really um, didn't grab those opportunities, um, England. Uh, the only positive for England today was Stuart Broad. He took a five wicket haul and he bowled well, Stuart Broad, 5 for 101. 29 overs he bowled with five maidens going for uh, three and over. He bowled um, well for his five-wicket haul. Uh, I thought Mark Wood was good again, bowling good pace. Um, again, um, James Anderson was class as he always is. Obviously, Ben Stokes had that injury to his side, couldn't bowl uh, for the rest of the innings. Uh, Jack Leach was, was poor, uh, went for 89 runs from his 24 overs. Um, yeah, poor from Jack Leach, not really effective. Uh, Darwin Milan bowled a few overs of part-time leg spinners. Um, he went for 15 runs, and Joe Root took a wicket. That was Alex Carey uh, for 13. Uh, so the skipper chipping in with a wicket there. But, but overall, it was a hard day for England in the field again. Didn't grab their opportunities and couldn't sustain the pressure on Australia. And yet again, Australia uh, were able to push on and really grind England down to the dirt really today and push on to get that 416 score um obviously England would have been happy that Hamid and Crawley got through to stumps unscathed obviously Crawley had that uh, reprieved obviously he was recalled after Mitchell Stark bowled that no ball um after Crawley edged that ball to the slips um he got recalled after Mitchell Stark bowled that no ball so a bit of luck there for England for once in this series but but overall, it was a, another tough day for England, and they've got a lot of work to do in this test match. For Australia, they're definitely miles ahead. They're in the driving seat. And for Australia, it looks like they're going to push on for a 4-0 victory in this fourth test. What can we expect from both teams heading into day three? It's pretty simple for Australia. They'll be looking to get a few early wickets on day three to put England under pressure in their first innings. Looking to bowl consistent lines and lengths, looking to build pressure with dot balls and maidens, and looking to put pressure on England and look to take early wickets. So that will be the plan for Australia on day three. For England, it's pretty simple for them. They need to try and bat out the day, uh, but that won't be an easy task up against Australia's bowlers. And they will need to bat better than they have done in this series thus far. Well, that's all the time we have for this episode. Be sure to subscribe and click the bell to get the latest episodes of the podcast and like and share our Facebook page and follow us on Twitter and on Instagram. Until next time, keep safe and bye for now.